Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. It's not actually entirely exponential. It's sort of like a mixture of a polynomial times an exponential, whatever. So this is kind of like a non-standard equation. We could call it that. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. Now, at this point, you could definitely guess, right? Like, is x... Uh, equal 1, a solution, 1 half, 2, 3, 4, whatever. You can get an estimate, you can get an interval of, you know, possible solutions, so on and so forth. So, but we're going to use a smarter approach, and we're going to put this equation into a nicer form. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first step will be to isolate 2 to the power, 256 to the power of x. So I'm going to divide both sides by x. Obviously, x equals 0 does not satisfy this equation. So I can divide by x and get 256 to the power x equals 1 over x. And by the way, did I say I'm going to show you a graph at the end? If I didn't, then I'll show you a graph at the end. So now, again, you're looking at this problem, but one thing to note, if x is greater than 1, 256 to the power x is going to be greater than 256, but the right-hand side is going to be less than 1, right? Because think about it. Like if x is equal to 1, 1 over 1 is 1, okay? They, they don't match. If x is 5, 1 over 5 is a fraction less than 1. 256 to the 5 is a very large number. They're not comparable. So we want to make sure that x is actually less than 1. So that kind of indicates maybe x is a fraction. You can test some values. You can definitely do that. But I'm going to do something different. Now notice that I can raise both sides to the power 1 over x, which is logical because that's going to give us something super duper nice. And that is the base and the exponent will be the same. And x and 1 over x will cancel out. So two good things together. Now let's go to write this 1 over x to the power 1 over x on the left hand side. It's kind of easier to read from left to right, I think, right? Now, this is what we get. Okay, this is not very nice unless you write 256 as a to the power a or b to the power b. So we want to get something like a to the a equals b to the b. Make sense? Okay, great. So at this point, if you want, you can replace 1 over x with a and solve a to the a equals 256 and then back substitute. It wouldn't matter. But we do know that x is actually less than 1, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can come up with the solution. 256, can it be written as something like b to the power b? Think about it. 256 is 16 squared. So hopefully you already know that. Or maybe you already know it's 2 to the 8th. Either way, let's play with these exponents a little bit. So 16 is 2 to the 4th. That doesn't help because it gives me the same thing as 2 to the 8th. So let's do a little differently. How about writing the 16 as 4 squared? Yay, that seems to help. 4 to the power 2 to the power 2, that is 4 to the 4th power. How could we get to that from here? We could write this as 2 squared to the 4th, and then same thing. So to keep a long story short, we got the following. 1 over x to the power 1 over x equals 4 to the 4th power, and from here I can safely say that 1 over x equals 4. The million dollar question is, is this the only solution? x equals 1 fourth. Obviously that's a solution, right? What about other solutions? So if you have something like a to the power a equals 4 to the power 4, do we get only one solution or more than one solution? So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and that'll kind of give you an idea. So the graph of x times 256 to the power x intersects y equals 1 at a single point. Therefore, there is only one solution. Where does this come from? We came from a different function. Okay, let me explain this a little bit. So if you have x times 256 to the power x, and I'm going to go back to the graph. Ooh, ooh. That's weird. I don't know why Desmos does this sometimes. Not Desmos, I mean, what is it called? Notability. Okay, so let's take a look at this function and differentiate it. It's a derivative of the first x1 times the second 
plus the derivative of the second, which is 256 to the power of x times ln 256 times the first. And if you take out 256 to the power x, you get x times ln 256 plus 1. So obviously this function looks like it's increasing because it does have this exponential piece, but it also has a linear piece. So could this be decreasing? Can this, the derivative, be negative? In order for this to be negative, x ln 256 plus 1 to be negative, x must be less than negative 1 over ln 256. And as you can guess, that's a very, very small negative number or negatively large. Is that the right term? But anyways, so our function on this interval is going to increase and it's going to intersect uh, y equals 1 at one point. If you go back here, it's probably a little easier to take a look at it. If you consider x to the power x, it's going to look like this, right? And for large values, for y values that are larger than 1, there's only going to be a single intersection point. It's probably easier to handle than the other one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.